So you've pushed a git commit that you don't like to a remote repository like GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket and you want to undo that pushed commit. Well, how do you do it? Well, you've really got two different options and which option you choose depends on how many other people might be pushing or pulling to that remote repository where you want to undo that git commit. If you just want to completely get rid of that git commit and you have full control over that repository and nobody else has done a push or pull since you did that unfortunate commit, well, you can just use a git reset and that'll clean everything up completely. However, if you're on a team and other people may have been pushing and pulling from or to that repository, you're going to have to do a git revert. Now that doesn't actually delete that git commit on the server. So if you wrote something in a commit that was unkind about your boss, well, it's still going to be there if they want to go in and search it. That's your lesson for writing anything bad about your boss in a git commit. But the git revert will make it look like that commit never happened. So essentially, Essentially, it gives you the effect of undoing a previous git commit. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com, and I have to be one of the world's biggest git advocates. And a lot of people ask me, how do you undo a commit that you've already pushed to the server? I like reset. Revert is probably safest. I'm going to show you both of them, but reset is what I'm going to start with right now. So if you have full control over your remote GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket repository, nobody else is pushing or pulling from that repository since you push that commit that you want to undo. The best, easiest, simplest way to undo that pushed commit is to use the git reset method. Now, I've got a git repository up here on GitHub. It's called Salmon, and it's called Salmon because I was talking a little bit about upstream branches, and nothing goes upstream like a Salmon. And I'm just going to clone it. I'm just going to bring it down onto my local file system. If you're undoing a git commit, you're probably familiar with this uh, whole git cloning thing. But there I go, right there on my file system. I have the same git commit history locally as there is on the server. Now, let's add a bad file and then do a bad commit and push it so we can undo it. I'm going to add a new file. Bad file is what we will call it. Uh, I now need to do a git commit. Uh, but of course, before I do that git commit, I got to do a git add, then do the git commit dash m. And I'll call this bad commit to undo after a push. That's a long git commit message, but you get the idea. And now I am going to push that bad commit up to the server. That goes up to GitHub. And if I come over here and do a little refresh, we can see, boom, all of a sudden, we've got that bad file. And if we actually look at our git commit history, compare it to the history over on our file system, uh, we'll see that that bad commit, A97C34F, is up there on the server and that is the one that we want to get rid of. So how do we do it? Well, you just go into your repository. You take a look at the git history. So git log one line and locally you reset to the kit commit before that bad commit happens. So F8B2015 is before that bad commit. So I'll say git reset and I'm going to do the git reset hard because uh, we don't do the soft one here. Uh, the reset hard will take your commit history back. It'll also clear out the git staging index and it'll reset the file system. So keep your eye on my file system after I type in F8B2015. I will click enter. Notice that bad file. Boom, goes away. We have now done a reset on our local machine. And if I bring in that git log one line, maybe even compare it to the old git log one line, you'll see that locally commit A97C34F is gone. It's been undone. But up here on the server, not so lucky. We still need to undo that git commit that's been pushed to GitHub. So how do we do it? Well, all we have to do now is just do a git 
push. So do a git push. And in fact, we have to say git push with force. We are changing the git commit history that's up on that remote repository. Git's not going to like it if you just try and do a push right now. Like, for example, if I try and do a push right now, it's going to say to me, hey, uh, updates were rejected because the tip of your current branch is behind. We've messed up the git commit history with the reset. But you can always do a git push with force. It's a little unchristian, but sometimes you just have to pull out the force. We do the force. This says, look, I know this is going to mess up the git commit history. I know it's not a safe operation, but I really need to undo that pushed git commit. GitHub says, OK. And boom, that commit A97C34F is gone. It's been completely removed from the server. So that is how you undo a git commit. You use that git reset command. But again, it's unsafe. And if other people have pushed and pulled to and from this repository since undoing that git commit, well, the next time they interact with that repository, they're going to be very mad at you because their git commit history is going to be all messed up. Now, the other option is to do a git revert, which actually doesn't get rid of that git commit. The git commit still stays on the server, but you undo all of the changes associated with that git commit. So it looks as though you've undone that pushed git commit, but the commit's still in history. That is what I'm going to show you how to do next. When you undo a push commit with the git reset command, you're performing an unsafe operation because you're changing the git commit history in an irreparable way. A better approach is to use the git revert command. And I'm going to show you how to do that right here. I've got a GitHub repository. It's cloned down to my local machine. I'm going to add a bad file to this repository. Then I'm going to do a git add Dot. I'll do the git commit. This is the uh, bad commit to undo after push. And now I will push that to my remote repository. Okay, so those are just the commands to push a bad commit to the server so that we can undo it. If I take a look at the git log here, You'll notice that the bad offending commit is ECC3CDB. That's the one that I want to undo. That's the one that was pushed to the server. And if I come over here to the server and take a look at my commit history, we'll see that, well, right there is ECC3CDB. That's the one I want to get rid of. So how do you do it? Well, this is what you do. You do a git revert command and you revert that offending commit. You provide the ID of that offending commit, ECC3CDB, I think is it. Do I have the Ds and Bs all configured correctly? I think I do. Uh, watch uh, the file system when I click enter here. Notice that the bad file has gone away. It asked me for a git commit message. I'm going to accept the default and just type in colon Q to get me out of here. And you can see that, well, the files that were edited in that bad commit are removed. The git revert surgically removes all of the changes that happened in that offending commit. Now it does it without changing the git commit history in an irreparable way. It doesn't go back in time. It actually adds a new commit. Watch this. I'm going to open up a file system here, a new folder, a new git bash. I'll do git log one line. And when you compare that to the original, you'll see that, well, we've actually got a new commit. ECC3CDB is still in my commit history. But all of the changes from that commit have been undone. And we've kept that in history because just in case other people have been pushing and pulling to the repository, they've got that commit. If we do a git push force and reset and get rid of that, it's going to mess up their uh, commit histories as well. They'll be very mad at you. So this was a very safe operation. Now I can do a git push to the server. I don't need to do the push with force. This is a much friendlier approach to pushing. 
all of the changes go up to the server. When I come back to GitHub and click refresh, you notice that when I look at the code, all of the files are in exactly the same state as they were before. I have essentially undone the pushed git commit that went up to GitHub by using that git revert command. Now again, that commit is in the history. So if you, there was something in there where you said something nasty about your boss or something like that, that's still in the history. So, you know, Git doesn't forget. Um, the reset can get you around that, but the revert doesn't. It still has that history. And if you look here, you'll still see that bad commit uh, ECC3CDB it's still there in the history, but the files are in a state that would reflect that that git commit that was pushed is undone. So there you go. That's how easy it is to undo a git commit that was pushed to GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. If you enjoyed that tutorial, um, I'd ask you to do two things. One, when you talk about me, say nice things. And the other is check out my Git and GitHub tutorial that I just recently published on YouTube. I've also got one on Git and GitLab as well. Both are about two hours long and very, very detailed about Git and GitHub and GitLab. And uh, if you watch them, you'll become very, very dangerous with these tools. If you're interested in me, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. I do have a newsletter where I'm talking about some of the latest things going on in the world of software development, including this upcoming new programming language named Mojo, which is gonna replace Python and completely change the artificial intelligence machine learning landscape. So sign up for that, because if you don't get up to speed on Mojo, you're gonna get left behind in the next few years. Um, and of course, uh, I do have a couple of books Behind me, you see my Hibernate Made Easy book. Also one in The Simpsons called Pickering to Springfield. They're both on Amazon. And of course, you also see a, a Darcy DeClute Scrum Master Certification Guide. It's available on Amazon. A number of people that have read that book have been scoring 100% on the Scrum Master Certification exam. So if you're agile or you know someone who's interested in getting Scrum Master certified, that's definitely the book that you want to uh, get uh, and start reading. Um, and of course, if you're watching this video, you're probably watching it on YouTube. YouTube. So the last thing I'd ask is subscribe on the YouTube.